so you want to build a website. It really isn't a bad idea and can be a lot of fun and very rewarding. So let's take a look at the things you need to know about to do just that. You need to have an understanding of the process as a whole. This will help you identify all the necessary elements and how they interact. You obviously have to have an internet connection via some Internet Service Provider, or ISP. When someone types the appropriate information in the URL bar of a web browser, this request, with the requester's IP address, is sent to their ISP. The ISP sends this information to a domain name server. Therefore, you must have a domain name, an address if you will. The domain name server resolves the domain name request into an IP address and sends all of the information on to the associated host for that IP address. The host server finds the requested web page and sends it back to the requester's IP address via their ISP. For the client's web browser to be able to properly display this web page, it must be written in HTML and can contain JavaScript, as these are the only two languages web browsers understand. Okay, now that you have the lay of the land, let's talk about each of these elements in a little more detail. Your ISP is your internet connection at your home or business that you pay for monthly. A domain name is the Total Web Info part of TotalWebInfo.com, where the .com is the extension. Any given domain name can have a variety of extensions. You can register as many domain names and extensions as you wish. Domain name with extension combinations can be registered for one to ten year periods. Registration costs vary depending on the extension and registration duration or an estimated average cost would be about $10 per year. But buyer beware! Do you actually own your domain name or does someone else? Hosting is absolutely critical and there are many choices. If your host server is down, your website is down. So there is a lot you need to know about hosting. I went through six hosts in my first six years. Thankfully a few years ago I finally found one that gets an a rating from me. Hosts offer server space on servers running different operating systems. The two most popular are Windows and Linux. You can have a dedicated server or use shared hosting where many websites occupy the same server or bank of servers. Shared hosting is what most of us use because it costs 10 or less dollars per month depending on the amount of bandwidth or traffic and disk space you purchase. Dedicated hosting can run 10 or more times the cost of shared hosting. In addition to offering server space and a connection to the Internet, hosts also offer an assortment of additional services. Some are free and some have additional fees. No two hosts are exactly the same, so you need to do some comparisons before selecting one. Free services should include email and the ability to have a variety of databases. The host server and web page relationship is what we need to look at next. Your host server is just like your computer at home, just more powerful and running different operating system software. This is where the text files that make up your website will reside. Now with any text editor you can hard code each and every page of your website in HTML and build your entire website. All you need to know is HTML and that is not too difficult to do. So for a couple page website, you're good to go. Unfortunately, websites, even simple ones, usually end up consisting of multiple pages. Dealing with more than just a few web pages present unique challenges in both development and maintenance. To demonstrate, let's take a look at a simple personal website. Here is Bradley's Offshore Adventures at lovesthesea.com. Brad has spent more than 20 years boating and diving the islands off Southern California. Brad has hundreds of pictures and lots of video to share with the world of the various islands and the critters that inhabit them. So if each page of this website were hard-coded in HTML, it would consist of about 20 or so web pages. Each time a new picture or video were added, someone would have to go to the appropriate page and alter or add the appropriate HTML tags. 
each time a new category is added, a new web page would have to be created with the same header, sidebar, and footer as all the rest of the web pages. Adding a new category would more than likely add another link to the navigation header or sidebar of the website. So the HTML in each and every page with the same header and sidebar would have to be altered so the navigation links on all pages are the same. So, if a website were built in this way, all hard-coded HTML pages, and it most certainly could be, when the request is made to the server for a web page, the server does nothing more than send the requested file back to the web browser because everything in the file is HTML or JavaScript, which the web browser understands. These types of web pages would have the extension of .htm or .html and can be served from any type of server, Windows or Linux. I keep talking about HTML with some JavaScript. This is a good time to explain what that means. Your web pages do not have to contain any JavaScript. JavaScript, as I am referring to it, is client-side script that is processed by a web browser and adds some cool functionality to your web pages. For example, the pictures that randomly display here in lovesthesea.com's homepage. Or opening a link in a new window. This JavaScript amounts to functions that when properly placed into your web page provide event-driven functionality. There are JavaScript functions that do all sorts of neat things. This script is usually obtained from third-party sources where you can copy and paste the code into your web page to add the particular functionality you desire. However, it is not necessary. A web page can be written exclusively in HTML without the addition of any JavaScript. So now you know something about coding exclusively with HTML and maybe some JavaScript. However, this method is not efficient and can become a maintenance nightmare for anything but the simplest of websites. Can you imagine having to copy and paste a new link into the sidebar of a 100-page website? It's a chore, and it can be done, but it doesn't have to be like that. To remedy this problem and make life much easier, you are going to want to learn how to use some sort of server-side scripting language. Server-side scripting languages allow you to use the server to do some of the work when building web pages. There are several places within a web page that are often exactly the same. Headers, sidebars, and footers are a good example. Using the server, you can make one header, one sidebar, and one footer page and include those elements into each and every one of your web pages. To change something, anything, in any one of those elements, you only have to alter one page and each and every page in your website displays the new information. In addition to included content, server-side scripting languages provide many other useful functions, one of them being the ability to access database management systems like Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, or MySQL, and data sources like a Microsoft Office Excel file or XML file, where information from the data source can be displayed within a web page or used to make logical determinations about what is to be displayed. Here, in the Dinky Dog Accessories website and Bradley's Offshore Adventures, both websites utilize a Microsoft Office Excel file as a data source. An SQL query is used to determine what information is to be gathered from the data source and displayed in a particular web page. SQL queries can be based on some criteria like whether the category selected is coats, scarves, or hats, like here at the Dinky Dog Accessories website. The Dinky Dog Accessories website is not a website generating revenue via the internet, but rather an example website I use at TotalWebInfo.com to illustrate the use of various scripting languages. When utilizing a data source, adding, removing, or correcting what is to be displayed within a particular web page is simply accomplished by making an addition, deletion, or correction to the data file. The SQL query displays the changes in the proper place within the website. No one has to mess around with any code. 
This is very cool and provides you the ability to build truly dynamic websites. By utilizing a server-side scripting language and a data source, when building lovesthesea.com, what would have been 20 or more pages of code if hard-coded in HTML was reduced to about 6 or so pages. The server dynamically generates the requested web page from these pages and displays the proper information from the data source. So how does the server know we want it to participate in the building of our web page? Well, it's all about the file extension. Different scripting languages have different file extensions, like .asp for Microsoft's Active Server Pages, .aspx for Microsoft's ASP.NET Web Application Framework, .php for the open source PHP scripting language, and so on for other popular scripting languages. When someone requests a web page with one of these page extensions, the server, if it has the engine or software for that scripting language running on it, recognizes that there might be some script in the code instructing the server to do something. The server executes the script and dynamically generates the requested web page displaying information queried from the data source. What you absolutely need to know if you are going to use a server-side scripting language is that there is a definite server, scripting language, and web creation and management application relationship that is important to understand. These all-important relationships are further discussed in my website and database connectivity videos and are explored in great detail at TotalWebInfo.com. So let's recap and look at things from a little different perspective. If you want to have any sort of web presence via your own website, you'll need an internet connection to get your web pages to your host server and to be able to view them via the internet. You need to register at least one domain name with extension. You need a host to store your web pages and serve them to the World Wide Web. And you need to have at least one web page or file resident on your host server. If you have all that, you are the proud owner of a website. How you build your web pages is another story altogether. Keep in mind that web pages are merely text files. Yep, type written text in a file with the proper file extension, only written in a language computers or web browsers understand. 